Hi everyone, this is Ben Songrath with EdTech Teacher. Um, I want to take a minute to talk to you about creating interactive images inside of Google Drawings. So it's basically making your Google Drawings come to life. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at, uh, if you're familiar with the website ThingLink, um, we're taking that same concept, but we're putting it inside of Google Drawings. So we're going to create um, a hyper drawing, if you will. So it's a way for students to kind of curate resources um, to expand their knowledge out on their drawings that they make and to take a topic and then include all their different pieces of information uh, linked inside of the drawing. So without further ado, I want to take you to this example that I made um, of parts of a cell. So here we have uh, an image of all the different parts of the cell. And what I would have my students do is I would say, okay, I want you guys to curate all the different information that you have on each part of uh, this cell. Um, so here we have like, for example, the nucleus. Um, so what I can do is I want to go up and I'm going to create a new shape and I'm going to click on a shape that looks similar to this. So I can draw out my shape to be the same size as the nucleus. And when that's done, I find some information which I already have um, brought up. So I've got a website over here on the nucleus. So I take that link and I'll bring that over so you can see that. So here's my website with the nucleus. I grab the link and then I go back to my drawing and there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can click the chain up in the top while the shape is highlighted or you can hit command K on a Mac or control K on a PC or Chromebook. Either way will work. So I'll go ahead and I'll hit the link. You can see it says insert link and when I do that I hit paste and apply. So now anytime this shape is selected, it will give you the option to go to that link. Well, I want to still see the image. And so this is where I can get a little fancier. So I go up to my fill color and I want to make that transparent. And then I also want to make my line color transparent. And what that does is it takes away the shape right here. But when I click on that, I still get my option for my um, link that I want to go to. So now I've got my nucleus here and that's done, but I want to find the cytoplasm. Okay, so that's this big solution that's inside of the cell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take another shape. Okay, I'm, I'm going to unclick on that. I'm going to take another shape, do a big oval because that's what it is, draw it out. And then you can resize this to fit. You can see it's kind of the image's shape, so I can grab this little circle here and tilt it so that way it's very similar to the same size. Okay. And so now I've got essentially the same size as my cytoplasm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and insert link, and I've got a link here from the Khan Academy on this. So I paste my link in at the bottom here, click apply. So now it's in, and I want to change this to transparent for both the line and that. But the issue is going to be that since I put this in on top of the nucleus, that whenever my first user clicks, they're going to click on the nucleus and they won't get the nucleus. So get the cytoplasm link and that's not what we want. So here's the trick. You want to go ahead and right click on the shape and in the order and say send backward. So what that does is it puts it behind now the nucleus link and it's still right there. You don't want to say send all the way to send to back because what that'll do is it'll actually send it all the way behind your original image. Okay, so we don't want to do that. We just want to say send to back or have your students do this step first where they kind of work from back to front. So the smaller, uh, if the background image has something or the background needs to be something, they would start with that um, and just make sure they layer their stuff on top. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to kind of do these little bitty uh, mitochondrion. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do another little shape here. And I'm going to just draw an oval over top of them. Okay, you can see what happened there is because I was clicked on this big image, okay, that we put, or the big shape, it automatically copied that link in. So you may have that happen. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you click change and then find your new link. So I'm going to take my new link for this one and hit apply. Okay. And then we want to make this transparent again. All right. And now because we have a whole bunch of these, all we can do to do is hit copy and then paste 
and it drops new ones in. So I can just drag those in. Now I have a completely linked in image of a cell. So what's this look like when you share it out with people? So I'm gonna go ahead and say share. And I'm gonna go and change this access to anyone with the link can view. Great, I'm gonna copy that. And then now I'm gonna bring up a test domain here so we can see what this looks like when I share it out. So your students would create this and if they don't share it with you or they wanna share it out to other people, Okay, this is what it looks like in view. So now as a viewer, I can click on and say, oh, let's look at all these different parts of the cell. So if I click on the nucleus, I get the link to the nucleus. If I click on the membrane, I get the link down here to that Khan Academy. So this is really cool in that now you've created an interactive drawing. And I could see this being very useful even if you had, you know, you weren't linking to outside sources. Maybe you were just linking to Google Docs that the students have made on each one of these. So you get the chance to kind of send them out to different places. So it's very neat. Let me just bring in a couple of more examples here. Um, here is an example of a visible thinking routine that I created. Okay, so this is a circle of viewpoints. And so I found the, the story of Anne Frank. I did this very quickly. But I am thinking of, and I put this in, and then now I've got the image of her hyperlinked out to the website. Okay, so I went through the different viewpoints and then found information that kind of answered my questions. Okay, um, another one that I did was the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And then you can go ahead and link out to like stuff about uh, the biographies of the people in the image. Okay. So another example that I did was an interactive map. So I took a map of the United States and I hyperlinked every state to a YouTube video about that state. Now you can see I did this one a little bit different. I didn't use shapes. I used what's called the scribble tool. So I outlined each one of the states and then hyperlinked it to a YouTube video about that state. So I used the History Channel documentary called The States. Okay, so to do this, uh, I'll delete Washington and show you. So I'm actually gonna grab this link real quick and then remove, I will delete that. So I go up here to the line tool and then you see Scribble down at the bottom. And what Scribble does is it allows you to trace over top of something or just draw inside of Google Drawings and it creates a custom shape for you. And when that's done, you can link it just like you would a normal shape. Paste and hit apply. So now when I have my mouse selected up here, I can click on the line and I can get to all of those different images. So you could have students actually outline something on their documents or on a drawing like this uh, um, that is embedded inside of the uh, Google drawing and they can link that out as well. Okay, so again, that's the scribble, which is up here underneath of line all the way down at the bottom. Now the thing about scribble that is kind of disappointing is that you have to click on the line in order to get the link. You can't click in the middle. Okay, so that is something that is kind of a bummer. Um, but if you click on the line, it still allows you to do that. So that being said, those are just some quick examples of how to create interactive images inside of Google Drawings. Um, I have some more in the blog post that I hope you'll be able to check out. Um, feel free to uh, send me any questions that you have with that and enjoy using Google Drawings.